morning everyone hi and welcome to another edition of the bread for soul convos with myself say lsg and thank you firstly for joining me um on this show and uh, like i always say for me this show is really about um sharing knowledge and experiences also just to help one another navigate this music industry thing better you know and on today's show I've got somebody who's been playing since 2007. You know, I met her in 2008 as a DJ, uh, Miss Jones. How are you, Tebo? Hi, hello. I'm okay. I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, well, thank you, firstly, for joining me on this platform. Thank you for having me. I've been wanting to come, you know, chill with you. Um, I've been following your your convo since you started. I've been following, um, I'm a huge fan of Bread for Soul um, mixes. So it's an honor for me to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And um, I guess I, I have to start with this because you've hosted a lot of events, you know, um, firstly, your yeah. birthday parties that you used to do, Hello, now you know, and, and those are quite quite dope and uh, but also you've booked yeah. you've booked other djs you host your annual events as well um but i want to speak to you specifically yeah. about the west end uh, because um i used to stay yeah. in the west end i think 2007 8 uh, until i think yeah. probably 2011 something like that and at that yeah. time you know Kahiso, there, there were a lot of there were a couple of dope venues, but generally the vibe was nice. You know, playing mm. in the West End, you could play anything. What what has mm. changed, or how how would you say the changes have been with regards to the party scene in the West End? Um, I mean, like you said, um, you were there since um, you were you, you used to reside there since 2007 and all those years. And I remember you and I were quite tight back in the day. Um, we even did that um, as, a, as a, a South African music conference thing together. And that's, 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 and that's when we began our friendship and, and yeah, um, you know, going through this journey together. Um, obviously, back in the day, in that time around, we were playing with finals. So that type of, you know, format in terms of music, um, it, it was a big thing then. Um, the, there were quite a few number of uh, producers and DJs that we used to follow, like, to the T. Um, we used to be fans of, and we used to, you know, support Ahuti. Um, Frank Roja has dropped um, uh, uh, something. We'd all go for that for that vinyl. So I think with the music, everybody used to used to love the, the what we call and what we love house music and particularly deep and soulful house music. So the scene back in the day, they like you said, um, you could play anything and everybody could just enjoy and have the time of their life. And people back in the day also what I've noticed is that they used to go out more for the music, more than anything else. So it was for the music and particularly with where I come from, Kobega style in the in Western area, um, I know our, our musical taste there is very rich because of the DJs that used to play, the DJs that came before us. We used to play on vinyls, and vinyls is all we knew. Mm. So um, going back to your question, a lot, a lot has obviously changed right now. Um, we we started seeing a huge influx of of, of DJs, new DJs, um, both male and female. Uh, the music has evolved a bit, you know, we are in a digital uh, a digital time right now, you know. Everybody um, can just have access to a software and produce dope music, you know. So there's a, a quite a, a wide variety of music being made right now, and that has changed the scene a bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, another thing, like, with regards to just your journey as well as a DJ that I, I, I'm interested in knowing, because... At the time when you started um, in 2007, DJing was not yeah. that popular, especially among girls, you know. Um, so yeah. what, what or who are some of the people that kind of inspired you to get into the game and, and become a DJ? Um, first and foremost, I think my family. 
um, I have to give props to my sister. You know, she saw something in me that I didn't even know I had. Um, she could see the effect and the impact of music and what it did to me and my my mood in general. You know, and we could just be cleaning the house, and 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 I, there had to be music playing in the background, and I would literally just clean the whole house. So it had a huge, uh, a positive impact in 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 my mood and in whatever state that I was in. And then she introduced me to a local DJ um, uh, who was doing big things back in the day as well, um, by the name of DJ Skink. So he taught me how to play, and he's the biggest. He's one of the biggest influences in my life uh, because he taught me the first beat, like literally first beat. Mm. And then I had people like you know your DJ PK. Um, so still, home ground. Still the people that I grew up with. Still the people that were around me. Um, and then they introduced me into this whole new world because all I wanted to do was just to learn how to play or do something in the music industry. And then um, DJ PK now started talking about playing for radio, and I was like, no, 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 no. I was not here for that. I just wanted to know how to operate um, these things. So he got me a few, you know, dope slots. Um, I think my first time, my first radio slot was was with um, YFM, um, called that Tato and Tato Show. Um, I was battling it out with a few uh, dope female DJs that are still making um, um, strides right now. So that's that's where my journey started. I was inspired from my home ground, and then it gradually filtered up through the ranks. Yeah, and so it, 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 yeah. It, you love yeah. DJs this much, DJing yeah. this much, but then you still went on to study journalism. So I'm like, hey, one, okay. I didn't even know that you studied journalism. So what what was the reason behind going to Boston and doing journalism instead of going to a music school or a DJ school or whatever the case may be? I, I think back then um, DJ schools were not a thing. You know, it was not see, uh, uh, seen as a as a professional um, course that could be you know created by any institution, you know? So I just still within the entertainment space, I wanted to find myself in there. So that's, 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 that's when I went to Boston Media House. I actually did journalism, radio, uh, marketing, advertising, and TV production, and public relations. So having done all those subjects, actually just, it makes sense to me now as to why did I want to see myself inside the media space? Because entertainment is also media. You know, it all things, it incorporates all things media. You know, you need a PR pra practitioner. You need to know things um, that are happening currently. You need to know things that are that are happening in the radio industry, in the TV industry, and whatnot. So it equipped me to be where I am right now and what I do right now. So it all makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, like, there's a bit of noise coming from your side, but I guess because of was funny, you know, um, I don't know if you are able yeah, to... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what that okay. Yeah, yeah, no but worries. I think it's... Okay. It's I, outside, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Um. So another thing then from the, you know, SAMC in 2008, where you and I met, you know, and I must, I'll tell yeah. people what happened Uh. Uh, during that time <laughs> the dj competition um but anyway i wanna i really wanna get into your because by that time 2009 uh, like you and and lerato had, had formed a group um i don't know were there just two of you or no also in the uh, as lira jones there were there were five of us so, so we had formed a group, um, and we actually registered a company. We registered the group. Um, the name of the uh, the company was um, Femi Sounds um, yeah. Entertainment. Yeah, Femi Sounds. <laughs> I, remember. I remember. I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was looking for the name. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So it was me, um, Lerato Moloi, DJ Lerato, um, Lerato Matoso. Yeah. Um, who is doing great things in the in the print industry right now? Um, who who else? P P um, was it? P la? DJ Fields. Yeah. 
I don't know if you still remember her. She mm. stopped playing. Yeah, mm. so she called herself DJ Fuel. Mm. Um, and then to me, yes, to me, Master Gela. So um, me and Lerato were obviously in the forefront because we we, we wanted to push the brand Lerato. Mm. That's when um, we released the album um, under Apostetic Records with Homo Zahang Mohali, um, that incorporated of about 13 locally produced tracks. We even had a remix from the internationally um, renowned DJ and producer Abita. So, um, so that 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 song did very very well. You know that album did very well. Um, it it really opened a lot of doors for us. You know we got recognitions um, from 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 the likes of DJ U, DJs United. Mm. Um, so it was Dionare mm. Fatela. You know um, mm. um, the the legendary Greg Maluka. Um, and, and the likes, you know, um, DJ Christos, I remember Black Coffee used to be a fan of Lerato's um, DJ sets. Mm. So, so, so we were just in the right cycle at the time. It was a really good time in our lives. Yeah. And f- at the time, yeah. like for me, um, because you guys seem to have almost cracked into the industry, you know, like you had almost you were there and let's say you know like and hey, bro. yo like there was so much um media coverage around Li- around lira jones you know like like you hey. said you released the, the album you got a remix from abika soul and at that time abika mm-hmm. soul was one of the hottest producers you know like Dude. here really like so um but then then it ended you know like and i i, I am not so much interested in why the group stopped functioning but i'm more interested in the lessons you know like of course at that time i was part of a group as well you know and and i guess there are different dynamics while you are in a group you know and and people will uh, part ways for different reasons but what are some of your lessons especially with regard whether good or bad um, with regards to what happened between like you guys whether as a duo or with other people who are around you guys Okay, so um, I learned um, the business side of the industry from that time. And um, that was when I'm, I was being open uh, to, to, to things such as contracts, um, you know, management and stuff like that. It was not just only about the music at that time. Um, a whole lot of elements were now starting to open up, you know and um things like working together with 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 other people as well and how to present ourselves and, and we learned that it's not just the, the, the music you're also a brand you know people look up to you um so we, we we learned things around you know how to conduct ourselves how to do business how to draw up invoices and and contracts you know we traveled a lot we, we we even got to play outside the country at some point and, and, and I was I got to be introduced to a whole lot of other cultures in terms of music and, and the club scene and the entertainment scene in general. Mm. So that's what I learned um from from the whole experience, you know. Mm. And then post that obviously, you know, like you said, um it ended uh, well mm. it ended well, luckily, you know, we're still friends even now, you know, I still talk to Lerato Matul first, I'll talk to Duni and DJ Lerato as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then after that, I had to now, you know, venture out and do things on my own. Um, it was easy for me to say, you know what, ah, because um, this is who I am, this is Lera Jones as me, but then I went back to the drawing board, repackaged myself, rebranded myself as Miss Jones. It was quite a hard transition, mm. um, but I had so much support behind me mm. um, because of everything that had happened and all the relationships that we had built as Lyra Jones. I was able to sort of like, you know, still carry those with me and enter the new journey as Miss Jones mm. um, with. So I had made um, a lot of friends in the industry that I could reach out to. Um, they helped me a lot. Um, I had made friends level Zini, you know. Mm-hmm. So the legendary Vini Davin be, uh, be, became um, more like a mentor to me, you know. Mm-hmm. He even 
called me up one time and 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 asked me to come join this 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 beneficiary program that they were running Le Ostido with with DJs United. Mm. So that on its own relaunched my brand as Miss Jones in the industry and repositioned uh, my brand in the industry. So that's how I found my way back again. Yeah. And um, I, I want to get into that as well, like that kind of um, having a mentor, you know, and, and people around you who can assist you, who can advise you as well. Um, before I do, though, before we get to that, something that you mentioned just with regards to being part of a group, ne? no matter how well a group yeah. is doing. And, and this is a message I, I also want to share with um, people that are watching, no matter how well your career is doing at a certain time things could happen that you know force you or something could happen that forces you to kind of start over you know and and you yeah. might be thinking ah oh, man i've built this brand for such a long time i've been doing this for such a long time but what most people miss we, we never really realize how quick things can get back on track once you get a, a, a right mindset you know like um so so when i left hood natives linda well luckily for you uh, it was kind of amicable like nicole grand or one with my case it was like a bad breakup you were know, like uh, when you're in a relationship with somebody and like yeah yes. so so it wasn't a nice yes, one it, yeah no it, it was very yeah. toxic yeah <laughs> it was a toxic relationship <laughs> but um the thing yes. is linda i was i was at the time 2011 i was like damn man i've been building this thing you know obviously with guys but i've been putting a lot of work behind this brand and to have to get out of it just like that it it wasn't easy but i can i mean like I, i'm here now you know i've done so much yeah. I, I had to start literally so much yeah i mean thank you but i, I had to start from nothing as well because at that time Please. people were used to me as being part of the group you know but i had to re yeah. kind of rebrand this uh, lsg name and then grow from there literally from nothing and the, the point i'm trying to make with this is that yes. anybody can start you can start right now like if you feel like you right haven't now. been getting a lot of pr thing a lot of social media things right if you haven't been getting certain aspects of your brand right you can literally start today yeah. you can be like okay forget yeah. what happened in the past i'm gonna start here and move forward you know um totally. yeah but this thing, yeah, yeah, development um, that you spoke about with regards to, I, I want to ask you about it, yeah, mentorship, you know, because you were uh, a, a beneficiary of Oskido's, um, I believe, foundation. Mm -hmm. And what was that foundation really about, if you could explain to people, and what kind of help were, did you get from it? Okay, so the foundation was really about taking um, upcoming artists or you know, let's say DJs um, at that point, because that was the focal point of, of, of or around that program. Um, so, so they took us for a week. We 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 went away for 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 a full on workshop on 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 marketing um, yourself as a brand, as a DJ. You know, marketing yourself and. Uh, basically packaging yourself as a business. So they got to, um, they helped us register proper companies, you know, like the proper CIPC route, tax clearances and whatnot. So they, they taught us the administration behind doing business in the, in the entertainment industry. They taught us the technicality behind, you know, the, the, the entertainment industry. So from, from your music production, to, to an events production even, you know. Mm -hmm. Sound engineering was also a part of the part of the, the, the program. And also what we we, we, we got to, 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 to share and, and, and meet a whole lot of you know established DJs and brands in the industry. Yes. So that taught me a lot, that did a lot for my career, you know, and, and, and that was just after I had um, given birth to my child. So, you know, it was with 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 um fully pregnant as 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 a as a female DJ at that time you feel like, you know, things are just, you know, falling apart and I'm how am I ever gonna be able to get back up? 
but then that just you know sort sort, sort of pulled me back and they also funded us with 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 you know a stipend nyana so to you know do this and that for about six months mm -hmm. so from that from that uh, program i got to launch my studio so i, I got a full on top of the range studio um and then also with having a registered a company from there so that's when i launched miss jones sounds entertainment and that's when i started learning um production that's when you remember when i used to come to your place yeah. and you teach me a few things here and there you know we used to share a lot of music as well so 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 it it, it really did that for me developed miss jones the miss jones that i wanted to grow um, in me, it developed the business um, side of the aspect for me and how to navigate through this this entire industry. And the program itself in general, I think did wonders for a lot of artists. Um, we had people like Heavy K. Um, I actually was in, in the same group with Heavy K. I was in the same group with, with Moby Dixon and, and a whole lot of guys and they're doing well right now because of their program. They used the same studio that 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 I I got to make the hits that that made them what they are today, and and I, I'll forever be grateful for that. But it was a very huge thing. So they had about 180 um, participants in this in this program. So they split it in half. 90 of us got the studio, and then 90 uh, got they actually got the the sound system full on sound system of cdks and whatnot mm. so it was a great developmental mm. program for everybody that was involved yeah that's, that's such a dope thing and i, I think like yeah. most of the time when we get into the industry like we kind of we could it's very easy to neglect the business side of things and, and the administrative part of things because yes. We are artists. Part, yeah. yeah, we are artists. You know, like about uh, we wanna create music. We wanna we gig. Creators. Yeah. So like it becomes yeah. kind of a, a secondary thing that we we hardly think of. For actually, I need to be thinking about the business side of things. Tax. You know. Um, I, mean, I need to be thinking exactly paper trail, investments, whatever contracts, um, invoices, quotation. That 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 just makes up the entire package of being an artist because we are we're a business and we do business with other businesses mm -hmm. i think that, that that's where we are missing it right now because if, if if a corporate company is going to ask you to be a resident dj on one of the product uh, projects they're going to ask for paper trail they're going to ask for something in black and white and if you are not able you know to to do those things then you it means that you're missing out on 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 money mm. you know making money yeah you true know? yeah and yeah. also another yeah. thing just with that um just the knowledge of how to use money you know i i had a uh, dj kanyani on the show um the other time and he was stressing the the fact that as djs it's so it, it could be an easy thing to do that when you get to a certain level and you start getting bookings and money starts coming in and then you don't really know what to do with that money and the natural thing yeah. is that you want to charge the money you know and and it doesn't really exactly. get into a business part like the money doesn't become part of the business it's almost like what you put there like yeah. a shelter you would, and then you kind of just use yeah. all of it you know what i mean yeah. it's something that yeah. i had to yeah. learn like um i had to learn really quick because there were yeah. times where i used to buy anything and everything whenever i wanted like sneakers you know i would be that person buying sneakers but then you learn i'm around the headphone yeah there you are it's not a headphone are you looking fresh as hell you know it doesn't work like that also yeah remembering that gigs don't sometimes gigs don't come sometimes you are there two months you know and there's not a single strong gig you know but then you child 20,000 no rent yeah exactly mm -hmm. and i guess that's another important thing when i'm talking about development um another important thing that samc really was you know um yeah. there's something that i want to get to to talk to you about because you mentioned it and and this is like falling pe pregnant and and you were quite young you know i remember i was talking to mm. you um my daughter had just been born i think they were born almost at the same time uh, my daughter and your child yes, as well they were 
yeah yeah what, what are some of the because some of these things people hardly talk about like as a female being in the industry yeah. it's almost like it's a touchy subject to talk about pregnancy and yeah. fully pregnant what was so and relationships and relationships too what has been such a, um some of the difficulties you know with regards to being a young mother and being in the industry okay so um yeah first of all um i, I don't know why it, it, it's such a taboo um um for for us to openly speak about about you know f- being a female in the industry and having um it's clear that you're you're a woman you're gonna go through things um that women go through you know um so you being in the industry doesn't take away your femininity doesn't take away from uh, your, your woman you know mm-hmm. so 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 uh me falling pregnant at that i was actually 23 so it wasn't that young <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, um, um i was just about to you know break through in the industry and that happened mm-hmm. so um that that was a bit of a, a fallback for me and hence I mentioned that um, I, I I didn't know how I was gonna be able to pick myself uh, and get back on track in terms of being in the industry again, getting bookings and being relevant. Um, I I just I felt like it was over. Mm-hmm. First of all, I remember I even posted on Facebook that uh, guys, I'm out. I'm not longer doing this again because I felt like it was just like for the year. You know, uh, and that's when I got a call from 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 Vinny um, to to hook me up with this program. So uh, after giving birth, the challenge was now juggling between being a mom and having to come back into the industry. My child didn't understand, for one, that how does the Chomisa, the parents are working during the day. My mom has to work at night. Mm-hmm. She didn't get that concept. And every time I had to leave her, she would like cry a mountain. Mm. So um, there was some of the challenges that I, that I had to face. Um, I had to go out there so that she could eat, so that we could eat, because EJing was the only thing that I knew, mm. you know. So as time went by, I now got introduced into a, a corporate, uh, the corporate world. I started working a nine to five in order to maintain a life. But then something always you know, um, pulls me back into the music industry. Mm-hmm. So um, I left the, the, the corporate industry. Um, Nine to five was not to me. So I had to find my way back and, and, and check as to how I can actually, you know, um, place myself within the business of making music. And that's when I ventured into events. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the whole juggling now became something that was quite normal for us because now she she got used to it she got accustomed to mommy going out at night because now she was going to get something yana to eat that she she, she loved you know yeah. something yana on the table mm. so it i had to balance being a mom like that you know keep her happy and make her understand these are the dynamics of my work mm. these are the times this is how i make money this is how we survive and now she's nine years old and she's a huge fan of me yeah is she in in any way is she in any way inclined to um doing music like do you get the sense of yeah and and i do want to know though because (laughs) i want to know with that because like my daughter is the same you know like anything music anything kind of entertainment dancing arts she's there but you know i want to know from you how do, how do you feel as a parent do you get to a point where you kind of are reluctant to encourage them in, into doing music just considering how difficult the industry is or are you more encouraging to you know do your thing well you know i'm keeping an open mind today um i want her to 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 be free and expressive and i want her to be in a space where you know she can she can also you know be herself you know whether i'm there or not so i I, every day i teach her how to live as authentically as possible you know so you know i think i'm going to channel if she wants to follow in the same route um 
it's, it's, it's even better because I'm here, I've been there, you know, so um, she'll have a, 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 an even greater mentor with, with, with her side, you know, mm. um, or on her side. But what I wanted to say is that um, because she, she loves the entertainment and music and whatnot, I, I generally think that this is like a blood thing. Yeah. I, I, I promise you. Um, I see a whole lot of, you know, uh, uh, friends of mine who are in the industry as well. Um, and and, and their, their children are also sort of, uh, you know, inclined and they, they, they like this whole thing, this whole vibe thing. They love music more than anything. And if that's what she loves, I will encourage her and I will support her. I will help her navigate through the industry. But low key, I hope she doesn't go <laughs> through it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, why is that though? Because I, I do need to. If you were to point out one or two things specifically with regards to being in the industry that you wish could not be happening within the industry or that are so difficult about being in the industry, what are some of those two things that you would mention? It's, um, it's quite a complex industry, you know, having to work at night, you're, you're exposed to a lot of things, you know. Um, one, I would be concerned about her safety being a mother. I'm sure my parents were con uh, concerned about my safety when I started, or I still are, you know. So, uh, like I said, we, we, we work in a very a complex industry. Um, a whole lot of things um, that we do are done at night. So for me, it's a question of, um, you know, safety and her being, you know, a woman in the industry, even though I don't like making that a thing, you know, um, um, this, this, this whole male dominated industry thing, I think for me, stopped a long time ago. Um, we have found our voices as women in the industry as well. So it's just, just a thing of safety and uh, yeah, anything else? I think each and every industry has its own, you know, ups and downs, highs and lows. It has its own challenges and whatnot. So um, I wouldn't say you no know, because of the challenges and whatnot. If she has to go through something in order for her to learn and to grow and to develop into um, a great person that she has to become, then it, it's fine. Like I said, I will be there for her to support and guide her. Mm. Um, also, just in the topic of. Uh, girls and you, you do you've got a an NGO uh, girl power and what you do you empower yeah. young girls through 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 this NGO yeah. um what are some of the things that you that you do specifically with your NGO like how do you get to empower these girls okay so my focus is on high school girls um what i do is every year in the beginning of the year since 2016 i've been organizing a day event for them so all the schools um around the west rand um i take the girls particularly um from grade 11 and grade 12. so my thing with grade 12s i I like, how do I put this? The, the whole objective is to help them prepare or prepare them for the, for the world ahead in terms of tertiary and stuff like that. And then with the grade 11s, also prepare them for the year ahead. I heard that it's grade 12. So what I do, I invite um, different stakeholders to the Department of, of, of Health, Department of, 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 of um, Home Affairs, I, I invite the, the municipality and the youth coordinators and whatnot, and we talk about things that are, uh, you know, surround your daily, you know, girl child's life and challenges. We talk about, you know, the their the, the personal well being. We donate, um, you know, sanitary pads for them. We donate notebooks for them. It's just a day full of information, motivation. And just to recharge them for the for the year ahead, for the year ahead. Yeah, and w why do you think it's so important for for the work that you do? Because, um, I mean, like I, I could think of a million ways, but for you, like, wh what are some of the reasons you do 
the the empowering that you do you know like especially specifically to young girls around your community yeah you know i've been a young girl you know uh, and i've faced all these challenges that, that that we grew up with you know and 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 growing growing up also in somebody that is sort of like a, a mentor for you can be a bit a bit challenging and 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 and, and for those who do have mentors sometimes it, it, it becomes it, it, it's sort of like a luxury you know for some people so what about the girl child that lives in the rural area that doesn't have anybody to look up to that doesn't have anybody that inspires them so that that also was one of the reasons why i ventured into or i opened this foundation i wanted to inspire i wanted to encourage i wanted to you know, be a beacon of light to these girls, you know, um, give them something to look forward to, uh, make their, their schooling years as, as uh, if they're not going to be perfect, but just contribute to, to the, their schooling years so that, you know, at least in one higher school loan on a listener trip head. Mm-hmm. It does a whole lot of, uh, a whole mm-hmm. lot of change in terms um, of, of the academics and stuff like that and the morale and, and, and you know, mm-hmm. so, we, we, we talk mm-hmm. a lot about the boy child. Boy child uh, or boy children are generally known as, as academics and they do well and we see a whole lot of them um, with, with, with A pluses and, and stuff like that. So also wanted to encourage the girl, you know, you can also do it, you know. So it's about also finding equality in the society for the girl child to also, you know, see themselves as one with the boy child. Mm. And yeah um just getting um i, I want to wrap up wrap that, that up you know but before what i about yeah. um do you feel that the industry has become more open towards um female artists and female djs or are there some of are there still some challenges that you have dealt with in the past that you see happening you know kind of still occurring for against the the female artists or female DJs? No, no, no. I think things have changed um, a lot. Actually, things are way better than when we started. Um, there's definitely a place right now for female artists and DJs in the industry. We have the respect and the recognition that 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 we we so worked hard for in the in, in, in the early days or in the early years of, of, of this whole female DJs. Um, thing when it was in- introduced. Um, like I said, we have the respect from our male counterpart. Here you are, you know, you saw it worthy for me to to, to be on your show and talk about um, all things um, that incorporate the industry and, and outside of the industry. So I think we, 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 we have cemented ourselves in, into the industry um, very well. I see a whole lot of female DJs that are taking their brains very seriously, you know, um, they, 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 they are out there uh, and and they're doing amazing work. They're doing amazing things. Um, I, I see others are actually even venturing out into doing production and whatnot. So we are definitely in the industry, not just seen as female DJs. Mm. We are seen as DJs in yeah. general. Yeah. Well. So it's a good um, space for all of us. It's just a matter of you as a woman in the entertainment industry how do you carry yourself how do you conduct your business how do you get your brand out there and what legacy are you leaving out there um in terms of you know how people see you how people interact with you and 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 stuff like that so i think we're good for now there's still a whole lot of work that can be done but i think we're well on the way there yeah and um, yeah. I, I want to speak to you about another part of your journey. You were signed to Mabala Noise. And I must say, you guys really had dope jackets. You know, that's one. I can tell you what. <laughs> the jacket that's Mabala Noise. Come on, ready. I need to what I... So I want to I know, like, firstly, wh- how did you get signed to the label? And did you benefit much from, from signing to, to Mabala Noise? (laughs) 
Yeah, that was an interesting part of my life. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I was I was I was signed <laughs> by the label in 2015. Um, when it started, I was the only female um, artist there. Um, so it was me, El Volvo, um, DJ Bongs, Victory Boys, and Du Boys. Right. Um, I got the opportunity because um, of the work that I had done before with my brand. I had already released about two or three songs um, in the, all the stuff that we that we covered already. So it was already out there and then that, that's how they, they, they recognized and they saw worthy um, for a one beat there and to be a part of their stable. So that was quite dope. Um, it did a lot for me as well. So that was like, it, it took the brand um, up a notch. Um, so. I, I, I benefited a lot. Um, and, and yes, the jacket is nice. <laughs> oh, the, the jacket, I still have the jacket actually, by the way. Yeah, so I released music under, under my balloon, right? I met dope people under my balloon, right? I traveled a lot with, with my, they, they awarded me a whole lot of opportunities that any artist or DJ could ever dream of. You know, I became who I always dreamed of becoming with my brother and I, you know. And uh, like I said, I released music. I, 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 you know, got to work with amazing people like Gesta. Sirumulu uh, was my PR manager. We, we, we did amazing work. I mean, I was, I was, I was everywhere. I was literally like on, on every radio station, every TV. I did, I did about two magazine covers with, with her. So that was a really dope platform yeah. for me. And then they, they, they started signing the, the entire country and I think we lost the day. Yeah, uh, but, but tell me uh, <laughs> before, while we are still on that topic, were you one of the people that got uh, the millions that, that were said to have been uh, given to a lot of Mabala artists? I've never seen a million. <laughs> I don't know, didn't tell you, did you five me or did I? <laughs> I, I, I? I've never seen like so many zeros and I'm I, like, no, no, hey, no. I, look, I wouldn't be here, hey? I don't think I'd be here. I'd be far, like, I'd, no, no, I didn't get it. I didn't get a million. I don't know. I don't know how it passed me anyway because I was one of the first people. To be signed under my balladers, I, I must have been sleeping. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I slept on myself. Uh, I think you slept on yourself there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Can you bow, Buffy, Clamona, Pizzi, yo, Nasty C, you know? Yeah. And we used to chill together, you know, even with the Rikiri. Um, we used to chill together. We used to travel together and whatnot. Can't they want Abam Blelo for an hour? <laughs> Maybe they are soon for I know. I'm sure because you've been here, she must probably would have been the first ones to get a, a, a twin twin yeah. SMS. <laughs> no, I'm still a broke. I'm still a broke artist. Yeah. I, I don't know. I need to call Renji and ask him if we can still do this again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, like, also, I, I, I think um, <clears throat> some of the that kind of coverage from media about the label could have possibly tainted um a lot of the good work that was done by the label you know like so it's this thing that i i don't really like about our country so you would have here's a label and you could overlook so many positives and only focus on one thing because you had some money are in there to million or whatever the case may be but but i want to know from you like um while you were there and you guys were traveling and you were kind of already mixing with some of the best artists in the country you could have possibly then fe- i'm sure you'd have felt that you know it was your time like you were there deservedly so because you had been working for such a long time um so then it ended yeah. like how did it end for you and how what was your kind of headspace at that time Okay, so at that time, um, like I said, I think that the, the company started taking on a lot, you know. Um, it was a thing of, 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 of you know, um, they, they, they were chewing a lot um, at that time. So um, I think they couldn't handle the pressure 
and the standard that they had set for, for themselves. And believe me, I, I believed in the, the vision, I saw the vision. Um, Reggie is, is quite a phenomenal guy. He wanted to make um, um, a, a difference in the entertainment industry. I think for him at that time, um, he, he, he didn't know the, the, the how and, the, and, and, you know, just to go around it, you know. Um, I think also he was not in, 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 in the right headspace. Also timing is everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think he 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 bit more than he could do, and um, for me, they they ended up dropping the ball on some of my work. And another thing that um, happened with me is that I relaxed because I had people doing things for me mm. that I used to do for myself. Because mm. before I was signed into the label, I used to be their admin girl. I used to make calls. I used to be. I used to market myself. I used to go out there and and and, and get myself bookings and business and and whatever the case may be. So I relaxed a lot. And then you know when a year passes and you're like, but where's the fire? I think I lost it within me. Mm -hmm. I sort of almost lost myself um, around that time. Like I said, because I was quite relaxed. And then I had to snap out of it. You know, um, me snapping out of it meant that I had to make a difficult decision of leaving the the label um, because there's, there was still so much more I wanted to do, and with the experience and everything that I learned from the from the label, I decided I was gonna equip myself. I was gonna take that and make it in the industry whether i'm there or not because at the end of the day like the saying goes nobody's coming from you i mean for you nobody's coming for you i had myself at some point you know and 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 while they had a lot of things to do and a lot of artists to look after nobody was looking after me so i had to go back to the drawing board and 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 see how i could now start looking after myself so that's when i made the decision to leave mm and um also like one of the things that you spoke of um i don't know who i had on the show and you spoke about the same thing that sometimes you get to a point where you are signed to a label or you are signed to an agency and suddenly you've got so much help yeah. you know you've got management you've got pr you've got people doing yeah. literally everything oh i think i was talking to zoe Mudikha and she was on on the voice and she was saying being an artist yeah. on the voice you've got somebody who's telling you this is how you're going to dress tomorrow. You know, these are the songs that you need to yeah. practice for the whole week. So you kind of, your whole life is managed so well, you know, and so thoroughly yeah. that yeah. you only focus on being a DJ. You only focus on being an artist. Yeah. But the, the yeah. negative side of that is that you get used to that, you know. So when mm. you kind of like leave out some of the things, like you say, things that you used to do on your own that somebody else yeah. was doing. And when that person stops, you before you know it you you lost it yourself you know you you lost exactly the, sometimes like you need to rebuild the connections the networks you know start calling people up again yeah. but i want to ask you yeah. do you do you still believe that somebody like as a, a as a single entity can make it in the industry so like without having that big team looking after you yeah I do. It's just a matter of you know, um, you know, getting going out there, you know, and 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 and, and taking advantage of of the if, even if you don't have a lot of contacts, a lot of resources. It's just a matter of starting, knocking on doors, you know. Um, we're living um, in 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 a digital world right now. Um, social media times. You know, um, it's just a matter of using platforms like your Twitters and Facebook and Instagram to reach out to people. Um, there's, there's, there's your YouTube channels, you know. Um, I think it's a matter of putting in the work yourself, packaging yourself with what you have, you know, and, and make sure it's a, the product that you, that, that, that you can sell, that you love, because if you don't love it, how are we going to love it as, 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 as people out there? 
So it's just a matter of taking yourself seriously, taking yourself as, as a brand, respecting the craft and respecting the industry as well. Package yourself and, and, and get yourself out there. Um, get on Twitter, get on YouTube, record yourself, knock on doors, and and I think eventually everything will will just you know come together and and and, and form a, a full a full puzzle. Just mm. it, it's just a matter of us doing the work. Mm. Um, you see people like your 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 Kespas making it in the industry as independent ent- entities. You know, uh, the boy is putting in the work. He's taking himself seriously. He's reinvesting into his his brand into his business you know mm. he doesn't get um, um a booking and get paid and then go buy a pair of sneakers yeah so he yeah. He, he, he he reinvests back into um himself as as a walking billboard because mm. more than anything when we're out there people are attracted to what they see and what they see is, is the people that they love and people that they follow on social media you know mm. So yeah, I think uh, those are some of the guidelines that that, that help me also, you know, um, get back into in, into the industry and rebrand myself after going through a whole lot of things, you know, in the past thirteen years as yeah. as a DJ. Yeah. So yeah. constantly reinvent yourself. And I, I believe so much in that. I believe that anyone can really make it. You know. Um, yeah. I I just think that sometimes. Uh, we get to a point where we we feel like things should just come and and you could put the things happen differently for different people so we need to understand this yeah. fact um i could yeah. start at the same time as a certain dj in the industry yes and and they could move quicker than than i do you know or, or things could yeah. happen faster or things could happen slower yeah. for them you know i think it's not about for me it's not it shouldn't really be about look so and so is moving quicker i should be moving quicker you know like it should be more about am i progressing can i actually see my progress and if i can't see my progress what am i doing wrong what am i not doing that somebody else is doing that i could also implement within my thing you know also not necessarily copying what another person is doing but there's a lot uh, there's a lot of lessons i learned just by looking at what other people are doing and then finding ways of implementing that within my career, within what I like mm-hmm. to do. Um, I was just, ad- I was advising another DJ on Friday um, and I said to her that like things could, you could do, you could either cry and say uh, opportunities are given to, uh, look at DJ Bootle, look at DJ Sake, yeah. Lady Sake, look at Miss Jones, yeah. look at, um, uh, anyone for that matter who see who is seemingly doing well but then you don't mm-hmm. ask we don't ask ourselves what am i not doing that another person is mm-hmm. doing how am i putting my brand out there and most of the time you'll yes. find that people are complaining but doing mm-hmm. nothing they're just complaining yes. because they think that they deserve to be in certain places it doesn't work like yeah. that you know even and doesn't. even if you do put in the work it doesn't mm. happen immediately like it might mm. happen for someone else so you need to always mm. be you know aware of such things um yeah. what, what would yeah. you say has been the most most difficult thing for you in your career uh sure the most difficult i've never been asked that question sure um let me think about it a bit i think staying consistent has been one of the most difficult things in the industry because you know life happens um whether we like it or not um, whether you're an artist or not you know life happens and then you know um, things can take you off track a bit and like you're saying sometimes you relax and sometimes you feel like giving up and then something happens and then you like you feel like you're on top of the world again so the biggest challenge for me has been uh, keeping consistent. Um, I've been releasing music since I got the studio from Oskido, I believe. And that was um, from, say, 2015-14. And it's 2020 right now. My last single um, that was released was in 2017. So you, you, you can just look from that gap 
two year gap um, as to why I haven't released and, 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 and stuff like that. So um, being consistent in the industry is actually everything you need to make it. So that has been one of the biggest challenges for me. Um, I, 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 I could easily say, for it, I've been getting sidelined a bit with, with lives in general, life's challenges, and then being able to hop back into the into the gist of things, uh, things has been um, quite daunting. But you know, o o also motivating myself uh, and, and constantly telling myself that here is a purpose; it has to be fulfilled. You were given this, you know, by Mudimu and by Badimu Bakohai. And, and, and it has to happen, it has to follow through. So that has been one of the, the, the most difficult things that I had to, you know, um, mentally, you know, constantly pull myself back to myself, mm. pull myself back into the industry and, 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 and keep going and keep moving. Mm. So, so, but yeah, um, more than anything, that, that's just it. Yeah, I think yeah. I, one of the things that you mentioned which are really important um i just want to state that overstate it if anything is that um you know life happens you know like um you yeah. could you could be sick you could be in an accident you know something could happen yeah. that kind of distracts you but i think the most and important delays you. and delays you too yeah. you know but but it doesn't change the fact that it happens so i think yeah. what's what's more important is can you come back you know like am i able how do you pull yourself how up? do you pull yeah. yourself up you know because it doesn't yeah. uh, you, crying about things that happen in your life doesn't really change anything you know and on what changes yes. any what changes anything with regards to our careers is really about are we taking steps in the right direction you know okay fine yes. I, this happened and this delayed me but how am i getting back into the swing of things that's yes. always important and if you have that mindset no matter what happens in your life no matter yes. you could find yourself in the lowest moment but you could be like okay mm. this is my starting point now i'm gonna start from here mm. and grow and before mm. you know it if you put in the work put in the the right steps you know you could find yeah. yourself in a different place in a year in a two years or however long it may take yes. for you you know mm. um just in closing because uh, i wanted to get through a couple of things but what i hope about your exposure you know you you told me last week that you you've been exposed to COVID 19 recently how was it for you like just physically and mentally too sure first of all what a time hey 2020 has been um this year has been really daunting for all of us you know and um for something as big as that virus to sort of hit us you know like that and you know, at some point, we all thought, "Well, you know, can talk There were a lot of stigmas around around it. You know, um, I think at some point, I also felt like that. Hore is just a stigma, or is and whatnot, or it's still far until it hit me. Um, so, so this happened about a month ago, when I started um, getting ill. On it was. Like a, you know, a normal Monday, and um, I remember the Friday before, I was at Soul's Butchery recording a a live mix um, for, for for a show my friend does, and then suddenly on Monday I get the sore throat, and then okay it persists to Tuesday, and now okay Friday um, the whole thing has deteriorated, uh, deteriorated. Now I am out of breaths. I am constantly tired. I have these headaches that I can't explain. But at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, no, this can't be it. This is just a normal flu. And then I went to test. And then the results, um, strangely, came a bit late. And they came, I think, after the whole two weeks duration of, of having um, being, being isolated and then they, they, they came as positive and when they came surprisingly I was I was fine I was well by then so I had recovered without even knowing I had this thing you know but obviously I, I had taken the necessary precautions I was boosting my immune system 
and and whatnot. So it was it was quite a shock for me more than anything that okay this is quite real. Um, it's no longer just in Italy or Western Cape. Mm. It's here in my house, you know. And it was a very scary thing to go through. Um, um, also mm. because I live with my daughter and 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 my father who is very ill at the moment, but with, with the grace of God and the ancestors, you know, they, they didn't contract the disease or the virus. Mm. So yeah, it, 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 it was a very scary experience. Yeah, uh, I'm just glad you, you, you managed to fight it through, you know, because yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I heard it's quite a, a difficult thing. Like you, when, you, when you've got it, it's quite um, aggressive. You know, a friend of mine told it's me. aggressive you feel like you're going to die there was a, a one one sunday i was i was i was at home and i literally couldn't breathe um and, and my room is upstairs so going to the bathroom J was a mission on its own i i i had to you know uh, balance myself with, 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 with things in the house we constantly had to keep the house dis- disinfected you know, I had to drink all these things like literally the whole day. So I had like death thoughts. Mm. I thought I was legit dying. Yes, yes. And that was very scary to think that I was going to leave my daughter mollifating like that, you know. And and seeing people who they are actually dying through this thing was even more petrifying. Mm. Sure. No, like yeah. hey, re, do me la hore, you know, you, you you are back, you know, and I just hope that other people, guys, if if you don't really need to go out, if you don't need, you know, to be yeah. in, in certain spaces, you know, don't be in certain spaces, you know, and and That's because it. like yeah. then like you Ayana, because but I I work, you know, I, I've got maybe once a week I'll, I'll go to work, but you know even then I try by all means to. <coughs> To really stay away and be safe you know observe all all I'll adhere to all of these safety precautions but you'll never know still you know yeah. but the best thing is to really i mean like now we're on level two you know we need to re- really be careful you know what i mean yeah i know who Chris it's gonna was. end in tears <laughs> it's gonna end in tears and i have to tell you that i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i um there's a there's one gig that i want to ask you about i don't know if you would remember this gig and for me i would rank this as one of the most difficult gigs i've played you and i were booked Kopochine. it was in september but it was freaking cold like it was yeah. cold it was in the open like no it's not open you know like there were, there were probably like less than 20 people but like an open area and i was booked I think you were booked playing before me and I, I played and then dogs and played my goodness was it not cold that time and i'm thinking you know like sometimes yeah. i don't know if you remember that gig yeah i don't think i remember it yeah <laughs> yay hey no when you are uh, what's happening and and i get to the hotel hey but we've gone through the moves hey, you, got, yeah no, it wasn't yeah. even a hotel like i think it was a an a, 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 a bnb thing I get another, I don't know what I, you know, like no blankets. I'm like, fuck. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes I re- you remember? <laughs> remember that <laughs> I, No, uh, uh, I just want to leave. I've mm-hmm. had quite um a, a lot of, of those kind of events where you it's so cold and they get outdoor. I literally, I remember there was one Nikki, Nikki Nalione Liliera Jones. So we used to play one on one a lot. So, I think it's Lala. She will go to the car. <laughs> and then when it was my turn, I will go to the car. But I thought it's it's the love of what we do, it kept us going, you know, yeah. uh, regardless of Nerilala but the way twenty or way two didn't make a difference. Yeah, it's just one of those things I guess, you know. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Next time had yeah. I had I known, uh I don't know, I think I would have made a better decision, you know, with regards to my travelling plans. Yeah, anyway, um I, I wanna say the work on it. Like I'm I'm very happy with regards to yeah. your career, you know, because for for somebody you, you kind of like been there, you know, something happens, you kind of um st- take a step back and then come back. So your ability to kind of always pounce back is really something great that yeah. a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people don't have that mm-hmm. mindset where they get kicked down and then it's out for them. So so for you to have 
that strong mindset, that will, and the passion to, to, to continue with the music too, you know, I think it's something commendable and I wish you really all the best with your career. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I'd really just like to say this, that I also commend the people who believe in me. Um, there are really sometimes that, that where, where I don't believe in myself at all. But there are people behind my back who just keep on pushing and, and, and tell me to get back up. And I appreciate those people in my life. And I would like to send a huge shout out to Batandra. That he, he's my friend, he's one of my best friends. He's a huge fan of Bread for Soul. I know you know him yeah. from the social. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to send a huge shout out to him. I want to send a huge shout out, shout out also to my family. You know, I've got an amazing support structure that also believe in what I do, that also push me, you know, when when I'm, 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 I feel like, you know, I'm, I can't do this anymore. And my daughter was always, always rooting for me. And people like you as well, who always call me up, you know, and hook me up with nice gigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're letting people I know. I appreciate you very yeah. much. Like, people don't know how far back you and I go. Yo. And I still feel like Christos when he made you win against me. <laughs> Listen to this. Hey, man. Yeah, actually, I almost I forgot to mention. I still have a grudge. There's no way. I still have a grudge, Christos. <laughs> Hey, that 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 competition Listen, was. I whooped, I whooped your ass. No, no, chief. No, 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 no. no. I disagree. Listen, listen. That... Manuela, Manu was there. Um, who else was there? Rocco was there. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Christos even he took my hand. He was he, he was telling them how amazing I was, mm -hmm. and I was like, but you didn't make me win. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, you know what? Yeah. yeah, he didn't. I, I mean, like, I remember he was like, you know, um, big up to you, to to Miss Jones. You played so well, you know. And the reason he didn't make you win is because on the night I was the better DJ. It, that's it's simple as that. It was a DJ competition, <laughs> you know. Somebody had to win, <laughs> and it had to be the better DJ. <laughs> anyway. Okay. okay. <laughs> But you know what? I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> you know what, Ned? Like for me, it's like um, what I like about that experience is that that's actually when we first met and we became friends after that. You know, because um, yeah. sometimes we view we can view people view the music industry as as an actual competition. Like, I I don't yeah, like that person. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I, I don't get that sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> for me, it doesn't make we sense. We could have cut it. Then. We could have cut it. Be like, yeah, yeah no been bitter but i'm um, i'm just glad that but also said, like we pulled each other up and i remember you pushed me a lot you used to be on some guy music i don't know why i didn't take you seriously and now you're making hits <laughs> i could be making hits you as well be. you, could be. you could be you could be talking about the 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 q baby the, the what what i was like nah i just want to play music bruh you made the music off there. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm glad. I mean, like, you, you could still do it, you know. It's just yes, that th this, time, uh, this time you ask for a remix or something, it's going to come with, at a hefty price from me. I don't care about the friendship. Mm -hmm. Business, yeah. business. So I want. Anyway, yeah, I just want to say to I people. Hey, <laughs> I'm also releasing a song. I'm releasing a single. Okay. Um, it should be out in two weeks. Um, this is an exclusive. I will release the official date um, on my social media at Miss Jones DJ Twitter Instagram and Miss Jones DJ on Facebook. Um, it's my fifth single um, that I'm really excited about, mm. and yeah, just I look forward to it. I will share all the information on my on my socials. Thank you. Share it with me as well, so I can share it on the show. And uh, I'm looking forward yes, to that. And so too. that you can remix it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll send the invoice. I don't mind. You know, that can happen too. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys for, for those who are watching, whether you're on, on your mobile or at home, on your laptop, whatever the case, your, the platform is that you're watching from. Thank you for watching the show. Thank you for supporting it. Please tag somebody who might learn from the conversation, who might get help from the conversation too. And please share the video so that more people can see it. And uh, tomorrow, God willing, I'll have 
Oskido on the show. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully that happens. Otherwise, let's remember to stay creative. Peace out. Thank you.